Hey guys, how are you today? My name is Bailey Sarian and we are live. I have a very high ponytail today. Like it's up there. So I figured today that I would film a story time, get ready with me, about me scamming the scammer. Let me grab my expensive makeup bag. I know it's just unattainable for everyone out there to afford this bag, but this is what I use. <laughs> When I travel or go anywhere with my makeup, I put it in Ziploc bags because I'm cheap. I don't know, I don't have the right answer. I have a story time for you because I need to bring awareness to the situation that is going on. It involves my mom and I did ask my mom for permission before filming this because I of course don't want to put her situation out there and then, you know, it's just like, embarrassing, I don't, she's not embarrassed about it. And I can get ready too while I tell you this story. This is VDL, oh my gosh, it's not in English. It's made in Korea, it's a face primer and it gives a really nice luminosity to the skin. So I apply it with a flat foundation brush and it's just nice. I really enjoy it on my face. Am I recording? Okay, I am, that's great. <laughs> oh my God, my life is a mess. The foundation I'm going to use today is the Ellis Foss Skin Veil Foundation. I bought this a while ago and it was kind of, a, it was expensive for a foundation and I have not used it. I've been using that Too Faced concealer. Yeah, so I feel like I need to use the stuff I have too. And I'm applying it with my Clarisonic because I used to use this thing all the time. I still do, I just kind of stopped using it on a camera. My mom is single. She's single, she's been single for a while. She's been dating, you know, get it mom. You get it girl. My mom is the type where like, she doesn't want you to feel bad for her. She's a strong, independent woman. She'll be okay. So she started dating, right? She went on Plenty of Fish, which mind you, Plenty of Fish is not the best place to go when you're dating. It's like that seedy bar that is in every neighborhood or every city where not the greatest people go, but like there's nothing else to do. So they go there. It's like that. Back when I was dating, I remember I was on Plenty of Fish. I think I went on a couple days from Plenty of Fish and they were never winners tell you that much. If you met like your husband or something on Plenty of Fish, I feel really bad. So I'm sure there are some really great people on there. So my mom goes on there, I guess, and she's looking for love. She's looking for Mr. Right. Not Mr. Right now, Mr. Right. I guess this guy messages her and she starts talking to him because he's pretty good looking. He seems nice. She gets his number. So they start texting and they're talking, getting to know each other. Blah, blah, blah. She said he had a like a German accent. His name is George, lives at Denby Avenue, wherever the hell that is. Let me Google it. Boom, boom, boom. Denby Avenue. Oh, Los Angeles? It says Denby Avenue is in Los Angeles. Maybe I should drive to his house. Oh, great idea. Okay, I will leave everything in the description description box that I'm using just cause when I stop, I get I get distracted so easily. Okay, so foundation's on, eyebrows next. Now he says, apparently he lives out here in Los Angeles. Weird, okay, moving on. He also says that he works in the oil industry and he's been working there for like 22 years. That's a long time, wow, that's great. And then he sends her all these pictures of him like traveling all over the world. So she, he sends her pictures of what he looks like. And my mom said that he FaceTimed her. Interesting. She said that he was texting her at like weird hours of the day, like mainly at nighttime or early in the morning, like 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. So he said he was like a, a manager and he was going to Ontario and that when he went to Ontario, he was gonna have to or he had to change phone numbers because his phone wasn't international. So he changed phone numbers on my mom mid-trip. That's kind of weird, but whatever. So at this point, I guess they've been talking to me for like a month. She was involved with this man. And then that's when he gets shady. Shay, a D. Oops, I got way too much. Damn it, damn it, damn it. So he says that he's stuck. He's stuck somewhere, okay? He's just stuck and he needs like $5,200 to get out of there. So that is when my mom tells him, I'm not giving you $5,200. Like why, am, why the hell am I gonna give you $5,200? She doesn't say that, but you know, she questions him and he's like pressuring her to give him the money. He's telling her like, oh, I would do anything for you. I can't believe you wouldn't help me out. I thought you loved me. So he's just making her feel guilty, which is, Fuck up. My mama said that she didn't give him any money. I don't think she did. I don't think she would fall for that. But I also don't know if she would tell us. 
And she's just telling me this whole story and she's like, I think I got catfished. Dude, this whole story just sounds so familiar. He had like a German accent, changing numbers, texting at like weird times of the day or night. And then it like clicked. I had just listened to this podcast of this lady and she said she'd met a guy and same exact thing. He had a German accent. He was changing numbers. He would text at weird times of the day. He wouldn't respond like during the day after building a relationship for quite some time. I think on the podcast episode, it was like a couple of months. Then he asked for money. The lady on the podcast, she felt she fell for it and she gave him money. I guess it got out of control to the point where she was completely broke. And then in the podcast, they actually found like some people who do the scamming for a living and they interviewed them and they were saying like, oh yeah, there are multiple guys like on this case. That's why sometimes the numbers change or that's why sometimes the accents sound different. That's why they text at like weird times of the day, but they have like a group of people who do this as a full-time job. So it was really interesting to hear the whole story, especially from the scammer's point of view and like why they do it. I guess there's just no jobs from where they live and that's just what they do, which is awful and not a good excuse. And I think the podcast was on Reply All. If I find it, I'll link it down below. It shouldn't be hard to find. I just was listening to it. So I had this great idea. I was like, mom, you block him, give me his number. I'll pretend to be you and I'm gonna mess with him. I mean, I just like messing with people. Not messing with people who don't deserve it, but messing with like shitty people. I'm gonna mess with you. So my mom gives me his number. George. <laughs> okay, so I was like, I'm gonna take over this conversation. I'm gonna mess with him and I'm gonna act like Cinda. My, that's my mom's name. So I texted him, hi George, this is Cinda. I broke my phone and this is my new temporary number. Temporary, temper. I had to text you and let you know first, since our love is so deep. Also side note, I have a really bad sleep schedule. Like a lot of times I just don't sleep. I'll pull an all nighter, it's very strange. So I texted him because he didn't respond at 2.30 a.m. And I said, George, you never wrote me back. And then I said, money? Question mark. Cause I thought like, you know, if I add money in there, he'd probably respond. Cause he wants some of that money. And of course <laughs> he responds. So then he says, good morning, baby. I got your text actually. How are you doing? And no, it's not money. I think he's saying the word baby because he doesn't remember anyone's names. <laughs> this is sloppy, damn it. And I wrote back, yeah, you sure disappear all day. How come? It was 3.30 in the morning. Then he says, it seems you have traveled already. LOL, I didn't. When are you gonna be back, babe? My mom is going on a trip and I think that's what he's referencing. So then this is when I decided, you know what, F this guy, it's three in the morning. I'm just gonna get straight to the point. I decided to lie and this may be bad karma. I needed to just be annoying and annoy him and waste his time. So he wasn't doing this to other people. So I wrote back, I got into a terrible car accident on the way to the airport broke my arm and leg. I cannot afford these medical costs. I got a bill for $6,500. Can you send me money? Lying about a car accident is not funny, but if the scammer is doing it first, I feel like it's free game. I was gonna guilt trip him. And he wrote back, I don't understand. And I said, you need to send me $6,500 to help me out. What don't you understand about that question? <laughs> Come on, that's funny. And then I said, you said earlier you loved me and you would do anything for me to help me out when I'm in need. Were you lying, George? Were you lying? And then he just he just disappeared again. <laughs> so at four o'clock AM, I said, are you gathering the funds to help your dear loved one? You said you loved me, babe. And then he said, text me with your real number. Does he not believe me? That's so weird. And he wrote back, I don't want a text here. Text me with your real number. I wrote, you said you would do anything for me. Wow, I thought you loved me. So it turns out I can't really talk and do at the same time, like it's so hard for me. So let's get back to the story, shall we? And then he said, take a picture of you in the hospital. And I said, what is wrong with you? I can't believe you would do this to us. Now then I asked my mom, hey mom, like, can you like wrap yourself in toilet paper or something and make it look like you know, I need something to work with. I was Googling images, something. But I was like, why am I doing this? This is ridiculous, like, no. So then my mom was saying that every time she would ask for a picture or whatever, he would say that there was 
horrible, horrible service and that the picture wasn't going through. So I thought that was funny. Horrible, horrible service. I said, it's been so horrible, the connection trying to get photos from you, it's probably preventing mine from going through too. And this was on Sunday. So he has disappeared since then. He hasn't written me back, but the reason I am like bringing this up now is because I, th I think a lot of people fall for this. If you're dating or if you know somebody who's dating, just know that this is out there and that this is happening and you just need to be careful. So upon further investigation though, cause I was looking at these pictures he sent my mom trying to do like reverse image search and I wasn't really coming up with anything. I don't know who this guy is, but if he's out there, he needs to know that he's being used for a scam. Okay, but this one made me laugh so hard. Once I like really looked at it, so photoshopped. You look at his head and whatnot, it's lighter than the rest of the body. You could tell like the edges around the hair just looked perfectly cropped out, pasted onto this, this body. I haven't heard anything back, don't know what's going on. I texted him like, babe, are you there? Babe, 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 babe. I just keep texting him. I obviously need a hobby but I wanna waste his time like he's wasting a lot of other people's. If you're dating out there to prevent being catfish or falling for a scam, one, try and meet up. Don't wait too long. Try If they don't wanna meet up within the first like two weeks of, of talking, then, I mean, that's two weeks isn't that bad, but like over a month, that's kind of weird too. Make sure to like, if you can at least FaceTime them and do a FaceTime date. And if they don't wanna do that, that's a little suspicious. Don't just give them money, especially if you've never met, don't do it. Meet them first. Be like, I would love to meet you first. If you're online dating, you just need to meet in person. Hopefully they don't murder you actually. It's kind of scary. The only reason I want to make this video is just because I want to prevent and bring awareness to the situations that are going out there because it's out of our control. I think when they're in a different country, just like there's nothing you can do. Don't know who this person is. You can't locate them because they're using like the fake phone number apps. There's just nothing you can do except for annoy them and mess with them. And that is my story time. So I guess I, okay, real talk. I didn't scam the scammer. I'm just messing with the scammer. If you have any scammers or people you think are catfish out there, let me know. I would love to talk to them. I, this could be my full-time job. It's fun. Well, I will leave everything I use in the description box below. Let me know, has this ever happened to you? Are, are you going through something like this? I'll send any updates if he writes back to me. I hope you have a good day today. You make good choices. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.